Politics, business, and religion. We discuss the topics you avoid at the dinner table, bringing you the biggest names in Texas politics and beyond. This is the Trey Blocker Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Trey Blocker Show. Today, we are honored to have Jody Rushton, the newly elected president of the National Federation of Republican Women, on the show. Jody, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the Trey Blocker Show. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Trey. So, Jody, uh, you you were born and raised in Texas, and I'd love to get uh, a little bit about your background for the benefit of our audience. You are talking to us now from Washington, D.C., is that correct? Correct. How chilly is it up there right now? Because it's, uh, I hate to sound like a whiny Texan, but it's a little cold down here right now. Actually, we are warmer than Texas. What? This week. <laughs> That's just not fair. <laughs> Come to Washington this week and enjoy the uh, 32 degree weather. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's still a little cold for me. I think I'll just stay down here. So, Jody, uh, you were born and raised in McAllen, Texas. Is that right? That's right. In the valley. In the valley, and, and grew up there. I, I noticed looking at your bio that somehow you ended up in Wyoming for college. How did that happen? My dad was insistent that I would become an electrical engineer. Okay. He chose the school. It was a long ways from Texas. Yes. So as soon as I went to school, I had a little bit of breathing room and I changed my major the first <laughs> semester to political science. Nice. Now and did, did you tell him did you, did you tell him this or did he find out later? He found out. You know, uh, we were back back in those days. They always sent your transcripts and your grades to your parents. Now they don't do that. Right. That's how he found out. I was taking <laughs> political science as a major. <laughs> so, so what, was he mad at you? Mad? Uh, no. <laughs> he uh, he was very proud of me. Uh, just a little confused by my. Uh, not wanting to be an electrical or a mechanical engineer, either right. one. Sure. So what drew you to political science? Uh, politics always, from my, my history, goes back to my grandmothers. My grandmothers fought for the right to vote. One of them earned the right to vote earlier than the other. One was Cherokee. Mm. One was so my grandmothers had a huge influence on me. They told me stories of how they fought for that right to vote. And they inspired me. If they could fight and work so hard for the right to have women's voices heard, I certainly wanted to carry on that tradition of having a voice that was out there to be heard. Absolutely. And it's in their honor that I continue to do that. Okay. So when you're in college, what, what did you envision doing with that political science degree after you graduated? Uh, that was the era of Vietnam. Oh. I was not happy with uh, a lot of issues that were going on right then, and I thought I could make a difference. And that was a big motivating factor for me. Okay. So tell, tell us about your, your involvement in politics after college. How, how did that transpire and evolve over time? After college, you have to realize we, we graduated and got married the next month and started on careers. My career was put on hold for a few years because we started having a family. Sure. When my children became old enough to go to school, the issue at that particular time was protecting our children. And it still is yes, the it issue is. of today that we are working toward. Sure. I literally had a soapbox that I went and spoke to crowds. In fact, uh, the airport was a great place at that time. I would go and, and uh, speak, not with a uh, wireless mic, because that wasn't the deal, but right. um, 
speak to crowds coming in from uh, shopping or after school and talk to them about how we could do a better job of protecting our children, educating our children, and just being there to watch school districts and watch uh, what touched our children. That was my issue. Because okay. of my children, I became passionate for everyone's children. And that was the issue that began my desire to continue to work through Republican women. At that point in time, I joined the Federated Women's Club and uh, my very first federated convention that I went to was in 1983, where I heard Ronald Reagan. Oh, wow. So that was the beginning of a career. I went to work for the Reagan Bush 1984 campaign and worked in the Western states with that campaign. And it has continued ever since. Right. Well, I, I think President Reagan inspired a lot of folks to engage in politics and stay involved uh, for the betterment of our country. So uh, I'm sure that helped push you along. It did. And uh, it kept me focused on continuing to work for the issues that were important for me, continuing to educate on the issues that were critical to our children, and to keep pushing. Right. And that's what we decided we had to do. Sure, absolutely. So the National Federation for Republican Women was founded in 1938, uh, which was 18 years after the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was adopted, giving women the right to vote. So what was the original purpose uh, of NFRW back then? How has that evolved uh, over the years? Well, remember, back in the 1930s, the country was going through some very difficult times. At that time, uh, we had just had an election where we elected two Republican governors. That's all. Things were going downhill quickly, and women were not happy mm -hmm. with the way they were going. And we looked at Washington and said, what are you doing? <laughs> we think we have some ideas that you're not listening to. Right. You need to listen, at least hear our voice. Oh, and the other thing was, we think we can do it better. Sure. So we're going to run against you. Good. It was the revival of women who thought, hey, move over. I'm coming through, and we're still doing that. That's great. It happened, it happened in the 30s. It happened in the 50s. Uh, women see an opportunity in today's era, uh, 2018, 2019. Women, once again, will be saying, listen to our voices. We not only have a seat at the table, we're going to be the table. Right. So move over and let us in. Good, good. Well, and you've made the uh, NFRW has made amazing progress over the decades. Um, and uh, obviously, one of our, our greatest senators here in Texas was Kay Bailey Hutchison, who served our state and our nation uh, very well throughout the years. So today, you're involved as an organization in recruiting and helping Republicans get elected, but there's also a specific focus on making sure that you're recruiting women uh, to run for office. How do you go about doing that? Well, now, now be careful because we support good Republican candidates, not just women right. candidates. We right. support good Republican candidates whose values and ideals and passions align with ours. And uh, yes, we are building a bench of women candidates. That's what we've been doing for the past 15, 18 years is building that bench. And we encourage women by teaching them how to do this. We teach them how to run a campaign. We take them through leadership training. We tell them tell us what you want and we will help you get there. Right. Republicans 
women across the United States, and this organization is active in 48 of our states. So there are 48 states with Federated Republican Women's Clubs that are actively working to train, to educate, and to encourage women candidates. And we do that by working for them and others, not just women, right. around the country in the 2018 election cycle, the National Federation of Republican Women contributed over 5 million volunteer campaign hours. Wow, wow. Those hours and the uh, worth of those 5 million hours, a candidate cannot afford to buy. There's no doubt so, about that. No, and we donated that kind of work. In fact, in Texas alone, we worked, we logged in over 2 million of those hours. Okay. So we are very active. We know our issues. We know what we want and we know how to work to get there. So you mentioned the Texas Federation of Republican Women. You also served as president of that organization at one point. So if, if for our for our female listeners who may not yet be actively involved in politics, but want to engage, they're listening to you and they're thinking, okay, what do I do? Where do I go? What, what would you tell them? The Texas Federation of Republican Women is right next door. You can reach TFRW by going to their website, tfrw.org. They will lead you and give you information about clubs in your area. There are clubs in almost every area of Texas, uh, over 160 federated clubs. And the federated clubs are a boon to Republican women and to all Republican candidates. And that's how you start. That's how you get involved. Start with tfrw.org. Absolutely. So I would encourage uh, our listeners to go to tfrw.org and, and get involved. Obviously, every candidate, every elected official I've known uh, in, in my 20 years working around politics, uh, that was always one of their primary objectives uh, was to get in front of the TFRW groups and, and to, uh, to get their support. Absolutely. Uh, they need to meet the ladies. The ladies need to have face time with them. And that's another thing that TFRW can help voters with is to introduce them to their elected officials. Introduce them to your candidates that are available for you to vote for or not. Right. This is the forum that leads you to know who it is you're voting for. Absolutely. And that's so important. Sure. So, Jody, I want to kind of shift gears on you a little bit. In Austin, right after President Trump got elected, there was a, a women's march, and these women's marches took place all around the country. And um, I inquired, be, being a podcast host, I, I wanted to figure out what was motivating these women to go march at the Texas Capitol and march around the country, and, and what were the issues that they were... I felt some of it was motivated by anger to some degree at President Trump's election, but I never could really get a straight answer uh, as to what those marches were about. Do you have any insight for us uh, regarding those marches that took place around the country? Well, that's interesting, Trey, and that you uh, tried to find out what those issues were because we tried to find out what those issues were as well. And it seemed to us that they didn't know their issues. And uh, it was interesting to see it. We of course do not say you, you, we of course say you have the right to go out and protest. Absolutely. But you do not have the right to shut down voices who are different than yours. So what we say is protest, but do it peacefully and your voices may be heard. But we can see through to the other side of what the reality is. And don't think for a minute 
that Republican women don't understand. The reality is, united in our strength, united in our strategy, we are fighting for Republican politics. Right. We are fighting for conservative values, and we won't quit. So, and, and that's one thing worth pointing out is these marches that took place were 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 billed and advertised as women's marches. Which, uh, when when the liberal press got a hold of this, of course, they tried to make it look and sound as if all women were angry that Donald Trump got elected president and that they were marching on capitals. Was that really the case? Well, it certainly wasn't the case here. Now. Uh, were we surprised that, that Donald Trump was elected? I think we all were. Sure. But are we critical of the way he's going about things? I want you to know we are not critical. What we're saying here is he's doing things a different way. Right. But please know that he was elected because we wanted someone who would clean things up in Washington we wanted someone who would tell us like it is. Right. We wanted somebody to filter through the mud and get us down to where we could really get something done. And that's who Donald Trump is. Sure. We got what we were looking for. Now, if he has to go around the press to get to us to tell us what he's doing, I say, do it. Go Absolutely. for it. Shut up. Keep the Twitter feed going. I want to hear what you are thinking. Absolutely. And that's a good thing. Sure, absolutely. No, it's it's absolutely wonderful that we are in a technological era where not only the president, but, but you as an FRW or just anybody with a, a strong political opinion can disseminate that opinion and reach people uh, without having to go through the filter of a very liberal mass media. I, you know, I like to tell people, I, I think there are a lot of good things that, have, that came from the election, uh, but one of the great things that came from, from the election was the fact that it's an, an undeniable fact at this point that the media is almost universally biased towards the left. I, I remember talking to people a decade ago and talking about media bias, and they'd look at me like I was a conspiracy theorist, right? But Democrats can't even deny at this point uh, that the media is biased in their favor. And, and I think that makes everyone more aware. Uh, hopefully it makes everybody a little more critical of the news sources that they're, that they're getting their news from. Uh, so that's a good thing. So let me ask you, Jody, um, <clears throat> President Trump has now been in office for a year. Tell me a couple of good things that you think have happened over the past year and tell me one or two things that you, that you would have done differently or that you disagree with. I think that uh, we're doing quite well. And I think we are learning. We're in a learning process right now. We're learning how to deal with President Trump and the way he does business. It's a new thing for us to have a president like Donald Trump, and we can't be expected to catch on to everything immediately, but we're doing a pretty good job of it, and I think that we are very supportive today of Donald Trump. Do we wish that some things he said would be said a little differently? <laughs> Probably. Sure, sure. Can't say that there, there were any presidents that we didn't think, oh, they should have done something a little differently right, or right. not done that at all. So can we be critical? Sure. But must we support this president? Absolutely. Look at who he's putting in as judges. Right. Look where we're getting with that. We have so much to achieve here and there is so much to be given not given worked for and achieved that we have to hold up that flame and keep marching and that's what we're doing all over this country there are women who are saying i like it i didn't think i would <laughs> but what it's doing right and right. that's where we're at today 
So, so going back to the media, they are striving to paint President Trump as racist and sexist. So how do you respond to, to women who say to you, Jody, how can you support this president? He's sexist. You know what? There, I don't see it. I just don't see it. I, we're in the middle of a crisis right now that's pretty much um, being pushed back on Trump, but there are so many others that have uh, fallen into a, a little bit of a, well, not a little bit, a pretty good sized uh, hole in the ground, and they, they made mistakes. And I don't think that we can forgive them or hush them mm -hmm. for those mistakes. But I think we have to look at each one individually and see what's happened. And as for women thinking that he's doing something wrong, the women of America know strength when they see it. The women of America know that it's going to take a lot of strength to pull this country back out of the hole. Right. We need strong borders. We need to protect our ch children. Pardon me. We need to get a handle on this sex trafficking. Those are three issues that we can all agree on. And we can also agree that previous presidents didn't do a very good job on any, any of those three. That's right. So we're saying take our three issues and help us achieve them. And we're, do, we're asking the women all across Texas and all across the United States, please get involved. It's your voice. It's you out there walking the streets, talking the talk. You are the one that can make a difference. Women elected President Trump, and we got just what we knew we were going to get. Sure, sure. So there, there was, there was a, Jody, there was a startling um, statistic or survey that I saw a few weeks back that said that the majority of millennials believe socialism is a better form of government than democracy. And I don't know if you saw that or not, but it's extremely shocking to me. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it, we, we know that our, the media, our schools, our universities are, are not teaching our students, they're indoctrinating. So it shouldn't shock any of us, truthfully, that millennials believe that. But <clears throat> what is NFRW and its counterparts on the state level doing to address that and reach out to millennials? What's your messaging to them? Our message to millennials, especially young women, is that we are reaching out to you. We want to be on your phones in the palm of your hand so that you can look at your phone and see issues and see critical things that you need to be supporting, legislation that will help you and our children, legislation that could be coming down the pike, all in the palm of your hand. We want millennials to feel welcome at an end at at home and safe in this country. Help us to get there. We need your support. Absolutely. Well, and, and I'll, I'll remind our audience again, please go to nfrw.org to find out more about the National Federation of Republican Women. And Jody Rushton, I appreciate you coming on the Trey Blocker Show today and, and sharing with us a little bit about the organization. And, and hopefully we can drive some traffic to your website and increase your numbers. And, and I greatly appreciate everything that you're do, doing and the organization is doing to, to uh, get America back on the right path. So thank you very much. As you know, it's our tradition on the Trey Blocker Show to end each episode with, with a quote from our guest, either a, a Bible verse, a song lyric, or a, a quote from a, from a, a political figure, uh, or a motto that they live by. Uh, do you have something for us today? What I think about every day is united, we're stronger. Our strategy is stronger. United America succeeds. Awesome. 
Well, thank you again, Jody, for coming on the Trey Blocker Show. And I hope to have you back, uh, back soon sometime. Thank you so much. Sure. It was a great day. To thank you. And thank you all for listening to the Trey Blocker Show. If you liked what you heard, please go to your favorite podcast app and subscribe, or you can find us on YouTube. Thank you and God bless. This has been the Trey Blocker Show. Please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app and visit TreyBlockerShow.com to donate so we can keep fighting to restore sanity to this great nation.